Hello guys, welcome to Hatch Sput Economic Hatch Sput. It's your girl Connie, and if you haven't done so, please go ahead, like and subscribe, and please hit the notification bell to get notifications. So welcome to my page, Economic Social Awareness and Financial Freedom for Women of Color. So I got a lot of great responses from my HR EEOC video I did. Um, a lot of questions, a lot of amazing questions, and thank you guys so much. As you guys can tell, human resources is my passion with a big focus on employee relations and truly helping you, you guys, the workers. I know African-American women, a lot of us do not know our rights, and that is my dedication to you, to help you know that, to empower you, and to guide you guys in taking the right steps to be proactive and protecting your rights as a United States worker. So one of the biggest questions I got um, in my um, YouTube and directly towards my email in my Hesses book, because my email is right underneath my YouTube, you can see it, um, is about social media. People were asking me about LinkedIn. So for, for those of you who don't know, LinkedIn is a, um, a professional networking site. So I, I just want to go and see if I can pull up my LinkedIn so you guys can see. So my LinkedIn is private. And I'm going to tell you why my LinkedIn is private. Um, unless you are a connection to me, you can't see anything of my LinkedIn. All you can see is my header. And um, I did it for that. I did it that way for a reason. Because as a human resource professional, I am well aware that people access the LinkedIn just to see how you look, just to try to get information. That is what I consider to be illegal. I even contacted LinkedIn and I made them know about this. So this is my LinkedIn. I have several LinkedIn pages because of course I'm involved in several different things. So this is my main page with my full education, my full background, everything. So I have a page just for real estate, I have a page for my HR consulting, I have a page for medical sales, and I also have a page for event planning and wedding planning. So this is my main page. So if you were to try to pull this up, you would not see my picture, and all you would see is just Connie W., welcome to the HR Warp Zone, my profile is private, please request a connection to see my full profile. You found me. As you can see, I'm a nerd. I have my Mario Brothers thing. So my entire theme on my page is kind of like a video game theme, just to make it fun for the younger generation. And if you go down, <clears throat> you'll be able to see, you know, my background there. So right now I'm a regional HR director for Express Spa, and it has my work history, HR director for Gap. Then you have more down here. Okay, then you have my education, Cornell and Metropolitan College. So you see I have a master's in HR there and a bachelor's in business administration. And then you have all my, I have my IGI from the um, the GIA Institute, which is um, a graduate gemologist because I used to work with diamonds. And I volunteer with the Lions Club and all, all my crazy information there. And if I go down here some more, you can also see that I... Um, trying to get down to the bottom for you guys, that I work as a PCOS um, volunteer, raising awareness and fundraising, um, also with endometriosis, and I have some animal rights things down there, women's rights um, for endometriosis, Women Global Network for Reproductive Rights, International Women's Hi Rights Health Coalition, UNICEF. So you can tell I've been doing this stuff for a while. I'm trying to get down all the way to where I have my EEOC all right, so EEOC volunteer for the past seven years, assisting EEOC offices in areas with investigations, free seminars, EEOC policies, procedures, and guiding private sector managers on government rules and regulations. So this is this is my entire. So a lot of people when they connect to me, they say, why do you why do you keep your page private? And I believe if you it's not private, like my information is private. But if you want to connect to me, I don't stop you. Anybody can connect to me. I have over um, uh, 4,000 people in my thing. So what I want to start with is this. Um, I'm actually going to go to my post. And my last post was last year, which is just recently. So I want to read this to you, okay? Um, here is my controversial post for 2017. I see the post, LinkedIn is on a dating site, so much. 
I see women give feedback about this being a professional place, not a dating site. Got it. I have to say, I think it is very hypocritical for women to say this on the basis of being a professional site. It has been documented that many employers, men and women, utilize LinkedIn in an unprofessional and illegal manner. Wait, what am I talking about? Asking for a date or saying someone is pretty is pretty is pretty, may be annoying, but is it illegal? Let me tell you what is illegal. Using someone's profile to see their physical characteristics that are protected by federal law. Looking at my profile to see if I'm too old, a veteran, my religion, my race or gender, or if they're too ethnic for a brand or any other physical characteristics that's protected by law happens every day. These cases are happening now, and that's why so many minorities across different demographics report that they believe it hurts their prospects of getting an interview. Yes, asking for a date is annoying, but how do we just skip the discrimination which is illegal? LinkedIn is not a profiling site. Thank you. So this got over 3,877 views, but strangely, I only got 10 comments, and most of the comments are me tagging my friends. Normally on LinkedIn, if you got over 3,000 views, people give feedback. I I don't even think I got feedback. I think it's me tagging some people, and that's it. Um, I, I think I tagged some of my friends, and um, th this is actually a Caucasian female who said so very true, a reason among others, I hesitate to put a picture up. And another person said, very, very true, Connie, it's not supposed to be a profiling site, especially when you get notifications that people viewed your profile on private mode. What's that all about? And the other Caucasian female said, I believe the viewing in private needs to go away. All right. So I gave my feedback and said, listen, I'm in HR. This is a professional site for me, 100%. I have never felt the need to switch my profile to incognito. That's what you do on dating sites so people don't know you like them or you're crushing on them. I don't understand why LinkedIn has the ability to switch to private mode and look at people's pages in private. It doesn't make sense. If it's such a, a not a dating site, it's so professional, doesn't make sense. To me, that enables um, discrimination. So let me just take you through what's happening in the EEOC world. Just to show you I'm not pulling legs. You know, is LinkedIn for people of color? Is LinkedIn a tool that's discriminatory? Is LinkedIn and other social media sites hampering? So this is what I have so far um, from the U.S. Equal Opportunity, Equal Opportunity Commission. So this is the EEOC. So they, they're now... This is because people like me, yay, have been pushing and advocating and writing and, and petitioning the U.S. Equal Opportunity Plumbing Commission to, uh, Opportunity Commission to look at how employers are using social media. So employers are defending this saying, oh, we use it to get information. First of all, social media, unless it's a professional page for you, it should not be used on your application, it, first of all, it, the, 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 the chances for something that is not legal to be used is so astronomically high. I don't understand why employers would take that risk. You have to understand, as an HR director, as someone that's committed to human resources, the bulk of my job with my company is to protect their liability, to not make them vulnerable. You have to explain to me what are employers getting that they can't get in the interview? What are employers getting that they can't get in the background check? What are employers getting that they can't get off your resume? What are employers getting that they can't get from reference checks? What are they getting? What are they looking for? Your vacation pictures, um, uh, you know, your religious beliefs, eh, 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 your race, eh, 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 and that's my buzzer for like, no, no, illegal. So I'm just going to go through this article really briefly because you know I'm about the facts. You know about the receipts, okay? So you see the emblem there, United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Oops, I went away, away for the page. So really quickly, social media is part of today's workplace, but it may raise employment discrimination concerns. My thing is, the first thing about HR, 
The first thing about discrimination, doesn't matter what criteria, you need consistency. So there has to be a way, if, they're, if they are going to suggest that they have to use um, social media, they have to make sure they're implementing it equally and consistently, which I know they're not because there's no formula. I'm in HR. There's no formula. It doesn't exist. So if you start looking at some people's Facebook, but not others, if you start looking at some people's Twitter, but not others, if you start doing practices that's not consistent across the board, and it just so happens it doesn't happen to certain demographics, you are putting your company in a massive liability for what? What exactly is so monumental, so tremendous that you're getting from Facebook? You Absolutely nothing. The, the, what, what you're getting from there is minute. I believe you're getting race. I believe you're getting physical characteristics. I believe you're getting age. I believe you're looking for veteran status. I believe you're looking for demographics to see where the person live. It is it's such a hotbed. It's not worth it. I would love to speak to someone in HR who's going to tell me it is worth the liability, the vulnerability, and the exposure legally. Why do you think this is a good idea? You you have LinkedIn. You have LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional site with your picture, your resume online. You make posts. You make stuff. You tell me you need that beyond LinkedIn, what are you hiring for, the CIA? So let me just finish what's going on. So Washington, the use of social media has become pervasive in today's workplace. And as a result, is having an impact on the enforcement of federal laws. A panel of experts told the United States Equal, Opportunity, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, at a meeting held today at the EEOC headquarters in Washington. The meeting was conveyed to gather information about the growing use of social media and how it impacts the laws the EEOC enforces. The increasing use of social media in the 21st century workplace represents new opportunities as well as questions and concerns, said EEOC Chair Jacqueline A. Brarian. This meeting has helped the EEOC understand how social media is being used in the employment context what, and what impact it may have on the laws we enforce and our mission to stop and remedy discriminatory practices in the workplace. And this is my two piece really quickly. I do want to cover this article just really quickly. I want to say if these private industries are going to insist we use social media, we need clear guidelines and it needs to be implemented across the board and consistent with every single applicant. And it needs to be clear what they're looking at. It needs to be clear to the applicant that we're looking at your social media. They need to be, when you do a background check, legally by law in all 50 states, you have to let the applicant know. You can't do a surprise background check. So this, this is almost a violation of your personal constitutional rights because if you're going to look at my Facebook, my Twitter, you have to let me know. And in most of these cases, they're not doing that. They're not allowed to do special investigation work on, you know, um, secret investigations or spy work or, you know, espionage. They're not allowed to do that. So this is why I'm saying if you're not coming forth with what you're doing, how you're doing it, and saying, hey, this is what we're looking for. Up to now, private industries have been struggling to define what exactly are they risking such a massive liability for? Because this is massive. This is massive. Let me continue. Jonathan Siegel, speaking on behalf of the Society for Human Resources Management, SHRM, explained that employers use different types of social media for several reasons. All right. Employee engagement and knowledge sharing, such as having corporate Facebook page or blog to keep employees in far-flung offices aware of new, policy, new programs and policies, marketing to clients, potential customers, and crisis management, and for recruitment of hiring new employees. So that's fine. That's, that's something that's consistent. That's something that's public polished. In fact, SHRM surveyed its members over several years and found that 77% of the companies surveyed reported in 2013 that they used social media, social networking to recruit candidates up to 34%. So that's fine. If you're out there recruiting, and I'm going to be honest, 
nobody recruits through Facebook. People don't contact you through jobs through Insta. It's just not true. That's not a trend. So they're probably talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is massive and it's well connected to every top industry in the world. Almost every single corporation on planet Earth is on LinkedIn. So that's that's probably where they're getting their numbers from. The use of sites such as Voila, LinkedIn, and Facebook can provide a valuable tool for identifying good candidates by searching for specific quali- qualifications. Panelists told the commission, what qualifications on Facebook? I, I'm not reading the article now, but what qualifications? My resume is not on Facebook. If you go on my Facebook, you couldn't even tell what I did for a living. And that's what we're going to talk about too. We're going to talk about how to protect your information on Facebook. But the pro- improper use of information Obtained from such sites may be discriminatory since most individuals' race, gender, general age, and possible ethnicity can be discerned for information on these sites. And that's what I'm saying. What are they getting from Facebook they can't get on LinkedIn? You have to understand the implication here. And when companies do this, they're doing it for a reason. What's worth the risk? It doesn't make sense. Renee Jackson of Nixon Peabody LLP, who counsels corporation, said that social media should be one of many tools used in recruitment in order to cast a wide net for potential candidates to the extent that employers conduct a social media and background check. It, it is better to have either a third party or designated person within the company who does not make hiring decisions decisions to do the check and only use publicly available information, not requesting passwords for social media accounts. In fact, as several panelists noticed, there already exists four states which laws prohibiting employers from requesting passwords and usernames from applicants' employees. A number of states have such laws pending and there are several proposals before Congress could do the same. So you have to understand something. They're only allowed to look at your social media public profile. That's why it's really important for you to constantly go into your Facebook and there's an option where you can say, view my public profile. So whatever they can see publicly, that's all. And they still have to make you aware. They shouldn't be doing anything behind your back. So if you know how to set up your Facebook, they probably can't even find you anyway. Don't put your state. If you, a lot of us want to put our picture, put a different picture. Don't put your date of birth. Don't put your telephone number. I see people putting way too much on their public profile. So I'll tell you how to do that too. The hiring process is not the only time that social media becomes relevant in the employment context. Um, who litigates on the plaintiff side, explain how use of personal social media accounts could figure into situations of workplace harassment. Even if employees pass harassing or derogatory information about coworkers away from the workplace, for example, an employer may be liable for hostile work environment if it was aware of the postings or if the harassing employee was using employer-owned devices on accounts. This issue is further complicated as most employers use a bring-your-own-device policy in which they require or expect employees to use personal laptops, smartphones, or technology while on the job. So that's not, I don't understand that because no job could force you to bring your own device if you're using it at work. So this is a weak counsel. I just want to tell you, your legal rights, no one can force you to use your own device, use your own data. If you're going to be like, I'm an HR director, I have two phones. I have a phone for me and I have a phone for my job. Nobody can force you to use your device for company unless they're paying for it, paying for your bill. It's just not legal. Like if if you're conducting work, nobody can force you to use your personal stuff for work unless you do that prior in a contract. But that, that's like somebody telling me, Connie, you have to use your laptop for work. That's true. That's normally not something you do. You, you're going to combine your personal data on a laptop with work data. And most companies don't allow that. So that's a really weak argument. Most companies are very psycho about their work data. They don't want to give you access. They give you computers and company logins and stuff like that. So that's really weird. The other major area addressed by witnesses was the increased use of social media as a source of discovery and employment discrimination, even where housed on third third party sites. So that the increased effort to access private social media communications may have a chilling effect. So you have a right. I've I've actually been through this with somebody. You don't. Your social media is your private property. Unless you're advertising your job anywhere on your Facebook. So I tell people, if you hear this, delete any work information 
on your Facebook. Don't talk about where you work. Don't talk about what you do. If you go on my Facebook right now, you can't tell why I work. If you're a fan and you're, you follow my Facebook page, I never put where I work. I don't even put where I live. I don't even put where I was born. You can't see anything because once you do pull your active employer in any way, then they may have a right to access that during discovery. But even still, that's something I would push back on. That's your private Facebook. And unless they are saying, okay, you're talking about this or public posts, you got to be really careful. So Commissioner Victoria Lippock who helped organize the meeting. As a policymaker and regulator, it is our challenge and I believe our responsibility to do to ensure that our interpretation and administration of laws within our charge are current and fully informed as possible. So the public comment submitted will be available to the Commerce of Commission staff working on the matters. So this is this is still ongoing. And you have to realize why would a private company risk multi-million dollar lawsuits to access information on Facebook? What do you think it is they're looking for? Right, exactly. They're looking for information that they legally can't obtain. There's no reason why you would what you have LinkedIn, you have um the application, you have the interview process. They also have the legal right to do a background check, a reference check. What is it beyond that they're getting? So it's not just about recruiting. It's beyond that. So let's just go to this right here. So social, social networks, a new hotbed for hiring discrimination claims. As corporate recruiters and hiring managers turn to social, social networking websites to source and screen candidates, what constitutes illegal discrimination? Find out, what, find, out about, find out what information about job seekers gleaned from social networking sites you can't factor into your hiring decisions. So this is my thing. You have to look at the probability. I do HR. I would not want to use Facebook. Because Facebook divulges a huge amount of information that I can't factor in. I'm trying to see what, as an HR professional, I can get from Facebook that I can use without being in that gray area. And it's really nothing. You are right to have your politics. Um, you are right to express the, your free. Like, you're not working for me yet. So I don't understand what it is I can see. Your Facebook is your private book. So you're allowed to do it, whatever you want. So I'm not too sure. Like people don't put themselves working on their Facebook. People don't talk about their job performance on their Facebook. People don't talk about, you know, how they feel about working and their work ethic. People don't talk about that. So it's really, to me, it's really fascinating to see what you can see on a Facebook. I'm not too sure. So social networking websites are fast becoming a staple of corporate recruiting. Depending on what studies you read, anywhere from 39 to 65% of companies use social net, um, websites to screen potential candidates for open positions. Sites like LinkedIn, which is fine. LinkedIn is technically a, a, a legitimate site. That's what LinkedIn is for. Facebook, I don't know about that. Twitter and Ninja, I don't know what the hell and I is and IG has made it easier and cheaper for recruiters and hire managers to access a vast and receptive talent pool. Um, Jessica Miller Merrill, an HR consultant who specializes in social media, she notes there are 600 million active users on Facebook alone who spend about six to 12 hours each month on the site. In addition, Merrill says these sites offer recruiters a view into the candidate's personality and work styles. So this is what is crucial. Unless you're implementing the same screening process, what is it that you're looking for? What metrics are you looking for? What actually characteristics? You got to be really careful when you start talking about personalities. You got to be because people have their personalities connected to what? What are your what is your personality connected to? Your ethnicity, your culture, your customs, your traditions. That's why it's not good because I'm just telling you as an HR director, it's almost impossible to implement that type of review consistently. Because how do you what do you what how do you do a characteristic or personality test without actually speaking to the person by looking at pictures? That leaves a lot of gray area. So let's just continue here. Um, in addition um, I'm going to continue. In addition, Miller says these sites can offer recruiters a view into candidates' personality and work styles that they may never otherwise get from a resume, cover letter, or job interview, which is kind of scary. What is it exactly that they're looking? I'm, I'm an HR person. I have LinkedIn. 
I use background checks, um, you know, reference checks. I do interviews. If you want, you can even add testing to interviews. You could do personality testing. You could do a lot as long as it's consistently implemented across the board. What is it that they're doing that, you're, that this, so they're getting? I don't get it. Up to now, I haven't seen exactly what they're getting. So Miller began using the web to find candidates for retail jobs. I went to dating sites, local city rooms, and community forums to source candidates, which is unprofessional. I would not go to a dating site to find candidates. That's kind of weird, right? That's weird. So this is what I'm telling you. There needs to be laws implemented. If I'm on eHarmony or Match.com, do you really think it's a, a, a professional thing for people to be looking at you on a dating site? That's kind of crazy. This web source based in strategy worked work, work well for Miller at Target and later at Office Max. About 30% of the candidates I sourced in 2008 um, in 2009, came from Facebook and MySpace. My, Facebook job seekers, in particular, had a ha had a higher rejection rate as opposed to hiring someone from a job fair or newspaper. So, they are saying they had a higher rejection rate on what merit? But the benefits of social working websites offer to recruiters and hiring managers, in terms of information they provide about their members, also pose a huge legal risk. So that means these people are utilizing information that's illegal, says Miller. Because of the way people meld the personal professional on these sites, hiring managers who use them risk factoring inappropriate information about a candidate that they learn through one of these sites into hiring decisions. For example, a hiring manager checking out a candidate's Twitter feed might find out about that candidate's health condition. The hiring manager concerned that the candidate may miss, may miss work or cause the company health insurance premiums to rise, may pass on the candidate, which is a form of illegal discrimination. So they're talking about disabilities, right? The scary fact for companies and job seekers is that most employers aren't being careful enough with the information they gleam about candidates when they use social media. So that means they're actually encouraging people to be sneaky, saying you should be careful, all right? Um, also, this lady is talking about age discrimination, all right, so people can go onto your Facebook, your LinkedIn profile, and say you're over the age of 40, you're too old. They're not cataloging this information. There is normally not a consistent process. See? Consistent process in place as far as what they do for each candidate. This is going to create a lot of legal problems. Because you have to understand, when you're talking about LinkedIn, that's a professional site. It's basically your resume electronically with a picture. When they're going on Facebook, what you have to ask yourself is, what are they looking for? As an HR person, I can't tell you what I would be like. I, 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 I would look just to have fun, but there's nothing professionally that I can utilize. Cause it's too much of a gray area. And also, legally, I have to divulge if I'm using your Facebook. I can't just go on to your Facebook and say, you know, I have to be able to tell the candidates we do screen social websites. It, it's, it's just a huge gray area. Um, I bet if a lot of people knew this, they would actually get rid of their Facebook or they would like do something to make their Facebook not searchable. Um, so CIO, this is a Chiao, the, the, the website, um, Miller Morell, about the legal implications of using. So they spoke about the legal implications of using social networking sites in the hiring process. And so right here, here's some questions. What are the legal risks associated with using social networking sites to source and screen candidates? If you're only using one method to source and screen candidates, you're missing the opportunity to engage an entire group of individuals, many of whom could be protected class. For example, if you're only advertising job openings on Twitter, that's a highly Caucasian tool. That's a large percentage of minorities who aren't on Twitter. If you're only advertising on Twitter, you could be discriminating because you're only getting Caucasians and missing the rest of the population. The other risk is if you're a government contractor, you're required each year to, um, for each facility to run to fill out an affirmative action plan detailing the people you're recruiting um, and how you're communicating job openings to ensure you're interacting with a wide, diverse range of candidates. So finally, if you make hiring decisions based on protected information that a candidate provides on the Internet, if you decided to hire someone because you find out they're Muslim, pregnant, or their child's health condition, these hiring decisions could get you into hot water. What information about a candidate gleaned from sites like Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter can a recruiter or hiring HR person include? So this is this is the joke. This is how you know it's all about race. So 
I'm going to be honest with you. My Facebook is not professional. I post pictures of Snow White. I got pictures of my cat wearing a wig. I got I got people eating donuts. My Facebook is not utilized for professional things. It's just not. I, you know, I may curse on my Facebook. So listen to what she's saying. Unprofessionalism. Why should my Facebook be professional? Inappropriateness. Why should my Facebook be appropriate? And character are things they can look at. If the candidate talks negatively about the company they're leaving, I've never seen that on Facebook, very rarely. If they have a lot of photos of themselves drinking, that's also, you know, they're going out, they're partying, especially young kids. That's not believable. 90% of Facebook fit pictures are people eating and drinking. So you really believe that these people, just listen, are risking massive legal liability by inserting themselves into Facebook. You really believe they're doing that because they want to catch people drinking? I've talked to several campus recruiters who told me about tweets from job seekers. All right. So it, it, it's kind of, it, you know, if they find a candidate's blogging about politics and candidates, political views don't match. The hiring man manager of the company can't hire, can hire or base based on politics. You know, so it, it's, you know, even that is a gray area. They can, if somebody's doing something about politics, look what it says. If they find the candidate is blogging about politics and the candidate's political views don't match the hiring managers of companies, can the hiring manager or company decide not to interview or offer the job to candidates on the basis of political views? That's crazy. That's that's such a gray area. Why would you go there? They can, as long as what the candidate is blogging about doesn't indicate that they're part of a protected class. So basically... This jackass, whoever she is in this article, is stupid. What do you mean? 90% woman, veteran, over the age of 35, minority, Muslim. Like, how could you know? It's such a gray area. Like, how could you know if this person is not a protected class? Because you can have a disability and not show on Facebook. I don't know anybody's disability on Facebook. I don't look for veteran status on Facebook. I don't look for if they have children, if they're pregnant on Facebook. So by you telling people, yeah, yeah, you can use it. Why put them in that risk? Why? What information about a candidate can't they factor in into the hiring decisions? They can't discriminate based on race, uh, on sex, age, religion, disability, genetic information, race, color, national origin, veteran status, or if a candidate is pregnant. So the lady said, isn't that kind of discrimination hard to prove? Isn't it hard for a job seeker to prove that they were turned out for an interview or weren't offered a job because their Facebook page indicates they're pregnant or their child has a health condition? And conversely, can't the employer rely on she just wasn't a good fit or don't have the right experience for the job cover up? All right. There, you know, it's, it's very sad, you know, when you see stuff like this, because you know, this is a gold mine for the EEOC. Attorneys are salivating. These companies are stupid. I'm telling you, none of my recruiters use Facebook. Absolutely none. If you want to look at a protested candidate and look at them and, and laugh at their hair, that's fine. Or laugh at their yellow shirt or laugh at their teeth or laugh at their small hands. I don't know. But you can't fact. It's just too much of a legal viability. It's just too much. If you have background checks, you have, you know, tests you can use, you know. So somebody asks, would hiring managers and recruiters and HR professionals be better off using these, better off not using these sites because of the potential liability? The girl says, I don't think so. She's stupid. There, there is such, there is so much liability. It sounds scary, but it's a great way to build reputation and get to know potential. If you want to do that. Do it on a professional medium. Have a professional Facebook page where your prospective candidates can interact with you on a professional level. Or use LinkedIn. LinkedIn. LinkedIn has, don't use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is safe. Okay. That is, it, it, it's crazy. She's saying, well, it's like not going to Chamber of Commons event because you're scared you're going to get sued. You have to understand discrimination is a problem in America. That's the first thing. You have to understand hiring discrimination and biases is a massive problem. The, 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 the chance for you 
to use something on Facebook as an HR person is so high, it's just not worth it. Even me, even I might go on the Facebook page and if I could use it professionally, even me would probably use something that I'm not supposed to use. So it's this is this is a very interesting article. I'm going to post it in the um you know, in the description and the woman says, but what if somebody finds out they're pregnant or disabled? How can employers manage this information or access information? You know, how could you avoid using that? And, and she said, well, they're not supposed to. It doesn't matter if it's hard or not. They're not supposed to. This is bull. You know these people are discriminating and it's just not worth it. If you feel like you need to learn more about your candidate, you know, be upfront. Do background checks, do reference checks, you know, contact their employer, you know, speak to people they've worked with, ask to speak to people in depth, look on their LinkedIn, look through their connections. There's so many ways not to expose yourself to unnecessary liability. So many, we've been getting, we've been hiring people for years. There's no need to use Facebook for it. And not because I'm scared of my Facebook. You can check my Facebook. You can't see nothing on my Facebook. My Facebook is wiped because I know employers do that. So, um, you know, there's other articles talking about Facebook and, you know, age discrimination. People are looking at people's age. So I, if you're doing age discrimination, of course, people are doing other discrimination. So definitely, if you have your Facebook before we go, um, I don't know why I'm logged out. Hopefully it goes in because I forgot my password. So this is my Facebook. All right. I'm going to go to the main page. Okay. And no, 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 no. So this is my Facebook. And what you can do, what I can, I always tell people view as. All right. And when you go on view as this is what your profile looks to the public. All right. So this is why I wouldn't use Facebook. You see, I'm Catholic right there. You see, I have a, a statue of the Holy Virgin Mary. What if you don't like Catholics already? You see a religious thing, but I'm not going to hide my faith. I'm not ashamed. But um, if you look down, you know, I have like old pictures and, you know, this religious statue and something about 9-11. September is PCO awareness, you know, a radiation symbol. There's, there's, there's nothing really on my page. And I encourage people to, um, you know, also clean up. You know, clean up your Facebook in the sense where even if you search for me, I did the option where I'm not searchable. You know, um, I actually went to my about section and I actually changed um, if you can search me. There's, there's stuff you can do. So look at my work in education. No places to show. No schools to show. No places to show life events, no relationships to show, um, photos, you know, I have a ton of photos on Facebook, so it's just nothing showing up, videos, check-ins, so you gotta, you gotta music, all right, so my music shows up, that's pretty harmless, like, my music and movies and TV shows, you know, so you see, like, you know, I read a ton of books, groups, you know, it, it, stuff like that. You see, like they can see some groups that you're in. So for all of you that are in those crazy groups, you have to be careful because they can see what groups you are that you're in. Okay, so definitely, definitely make sure you clean up your Facebook page, um, make it not searchable. You can definitely go in and change because if you try to search me on Google, you can't find me like it's going to be hard to find me. If you guys search me on Google, like just randomly, you have to like have a direct thing to my page. A lot of people have issues with finding me. <laughs> so that's it. That's it, guys. And now you see this is what you, you know my Facebook page looks like. And um, 
You see, you really have to be careful because people can see all the groups you're in. So all of you that are in those sookie sookie, sookie sookie groups, you got to be careful. You know, I'm really happy that all the groups I'm in are like just blah, but um, you got to be careful because people will use that against you. All right, guys. So that's it for now. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for being here.